After studying this module, you shall be able to know about how to reconstruct the crime scene, the various equipments needed for crime scene, photography and about the plan of action at the scene of crime. We will also learn about photographing specific crime scene and how to approach a specific crime scene. Now, introduction. The crime scene is the area where a crime, namely theft, robbery, loot or murder has taken place and from which majority of the physical evidence associated with the crime is obtained. It is concerned with the photographic documentation of evidence, crime scenes and autopsies for investigation and presentation of an argument in a court of law. It provides investigators with an initial point to define the characteristics of the questionable and victim. Primary scene and various sites have to be thoroughly examined for the purpose. The main thrust will be finding of some trace evidences at each scene of crime that relates to suspect with the victim. A crime scene photographer must be able to identify the target areas where probable evidence is located and suitably capture those areas by using various photographic techniques so that they are presentable in the court of law. Reconstructing the crime scene After the initial walkthrough or survey of the crime scene, the investigator should mentally formulate a hypothesis of the crime, focusing on the likely sequence of events and the locations and positions of everyone present during the crime. Information like the following may be critical in determining the truthfulness of a suspect or the reliability of a witness. In this, shoe prints may reveal a perpetrator's every step. Second, fingerprints may indicate the things the perpetrator touched. Next, tool marks may signify points of entry, exit or where safes or logged cabinets are tried open. Next, blood spatters, bullet trajectories, the angle and severity of blow and stabs and the nature of the victim's injury can reveal the actual and relative positions of the assailant, victim and anyone else who was present during the crime. Next, the physical changes that take place in a corpse may indicate whether the body was moved several hours after death. The investigator should look at each piece of physical evidence to find out whether it supports this theory. Considering information obtained not only at the scene but also from the crime lab, medical reports of anyone who was injured and the medical examiner's autopsy examination. Anything that doesn't fit in with or justify the investigator's theory of the crime must be reconsidered, otherwise the theory must change. As a result, the reconstruction of a crime scene is constantly evolving as more evidence is uncovered. The investigator or the team repeatedly test the increasing crime theory in contradictions of the evidence and does not make any assumptions although they have relevancy. An investigator may logically believe that a piece of evidence ended up where it did because of a suspect's action, but if the hard evidence doesn't support this belief, the theory must be held suspect. If a gun is found just outside the rear door of a house where a homicide took place, logic suggests that the assailant dropped the gun while escaping. Although that's certainly a possibility without solid evidence, ruling out other possibilities may be difficult. For all investigators known, the gun had been tossed there in an attempt to make a domestic homicide look like a murder committed by a bulgar whom the victim supposedly caught in the act. Evidence like the spouse's fingerprints on the gun or the victim's blood on the spouse's shoe may of course change the theory. But until all evidence in a reconstruction is considered and explained, investigators can't reach any absolute conclusion. Now, Equipments for Crime Scene Photography In this, Crime Scene Photographic Kit 
the following items should be available to the crime scene photographer in order to photograph most scenes and evidences. The, in this, the first is the camera. Crime scene photographers should use a high quality digital camera, preferably a SLR camera. It has at least 10 megapixels and manual exposure sites and various custom settings in the field of ISO or sensitivity, focusing zone, exposure modes, bracketing modes, white balance, delay timer, mirror lock, radio trigger, step aperture and shutter speed etc. are usually suitable for crime scene and evidence photography. The body of the camera should be stirred and water resistant since the field of crime scene is always vulnerable to variable situations and need immediate action for collection of evidence. Next is normal lens. A normal lens provides the best perspective for most of the photographs. A 50mm lens is considered a normal lens for a 35mm format SLR camera. Now the next is wide angle lens. A wide angle lens is required for taking pictures in small rooms or other compact areas. A 28 to 35 mm lens is considered a wide angle lens for a 35 mm camera. Recent practice is to use a wide angle zoom from 18 to 35 mm. Now the next is close up lens and close up accessories. Most normal lenses do not focus closer than about 3 feet. A micro lens or a close up accessory for the normal lens is needed to photograph small items of evidence. Close up accessories include 1 to 1 adapters, extension tubes, bellows, reversing rings or close up filters. Although scale is used, sometimes real size images of small size evidence are required. Now the next is filters. A polarizing filter is often really required for photographing through glass and into water. Colored filters like red, orange, yellow, blue and green are used for taking pictures of several evidences by black and white film. Now the next is electronic flash. Electronic flash especially with TTL exposure measurement provides additional light that is often needed when photographing indoors, outdoors, at night, filling in shadows, in bright daylight scenes and for lighting evidences. Now the next is remote synchronizing cord for electronic flash or the radio trigger. A remote sync cord allows the electronic flash to be operated when it is not mounted on camera. Many photographs especially Photographs of certain types of evidence cannot be photographed with the flash mounted on the camera. Now it is possible to operate remotely located of unconnected flash through the camera with the help of a radio trigger which are required to illuminate a large area at night. Now the next is additional camera and electric flash series. Batteries can pass away deprived of cautioning at the time of documentation of a scene. For both the camera and electronic flash, additional batteries should be carried. Now the next is tripod. A sturdy and lightweight tripods are necessary to make the camera rest on stationary locations for long exposures and for positioning the camera during certain types of evidences photography. Now the next is digital storage card. Adequate memory cards of suitable formats for the camera used with faster reading and writing capability. Mirror copy of cards to be kept before giving it to someone without disturbing the original card. It is important to make redundant copy of images without disturbing the metadata, photo log, notebook and pen. A photo log is necessary for recording information about each photograph taken at a crime scene. The notebook should be carried for recording various notes regarding crime scene. Now the next is 
scales and tape measurements. Different scales containing 6 inch and 36 inch size should be taken for snapping drives kinds of objects. Long tape measures with large numbers are occasionally needed when taking pictures of large objects of evidence or large spaces in a crime scene. Now the next is ABFO2 scale. A ABFO2 scale is the preferred scale for photographing injuries. This is extremely essential item which judges the actual size of the evidence by seeing the image photograph. Now the next is angle finder. An angle finder is used to help position a camera for photographing certain types of evidence at the crime scene. Now the next is color chart or color control patches. Color chart or color control covering are valuable for color mentioning the injury photography. Now the next is 18% gray card. A 18% gray card is used as an aid in getting accurate exposure. Now the next is index cards and felt pen. An identifier is essential in a picture. We can give a number or identifier on an index card and place it in the photograph. Now the next is flashlight. A flashlight is helpful to observe in dark areas by shining the light on evidence from different angles you can see where it is best to position the electronic flash for a photograph. Now the next is plan of action in crime scene. The main course of action includes managing a crime scene includes careful examination of the area, note taking, sketching, photography and collection of physical evidence. The crime scene must be approached in a methodological way and certain steps must be performed before others. There are basically 12 steps involved in the organization in a crime scene search operation. The first is the preparation. Second is the approach. Third is to secure and protect the crime scene. Fourth, initiate preliminary survey. Fifth is to evaluate physical evidences possibilities. Sixth is to prepare a narrative description. Seventh is to depict the scene of crime photographically. Eight to prepare diagram or sketch of the scene. Nine conduct a detailed search. Ten record and collect physical evidence. Eleventh is to conduct final survey. Twelve release the scene of crime. Now the scene of crime photography. The well known phrase one picture is worth a thousand words certainly holds true with crime scene photography. Sciences in crime investigation could not be carried on without photography. Out of the all the sciences used for forensic investigation, photography plays a vital role and is a visual means of communication. Photographs consist the single most important form of demonstrative evidence used in the court of law. Before any items are moved or even touched, the crime scene should be photographed. The photographs should be taken to clearly and accurately depict the scene as it was found. The paths taken by the criminal to the scene, the point of entry, the exit and the escape route. Detailed photographs should be taken to show items of physical evidence in the condition in which they were found by the investigator prior to the removal. Now the following items of the scene of crime should be photographs. The main site of the screen, then the route of approach of the scene should be photographed, then the point of entrance and then the location and position of the scene, then the evidences like injuries, weapon, hair or fibers. Next the evidence left by the criminals like weapon or bullets. Then we should photograph the point of exit and route of departure. Now admissibility of photographic evidence. In this the first point is three major points of 
qualification of a photograph in court. In this, object pictured must be material or relevant to the point in issue. Next, the photograph must not appeal to the emotions or trend to prejudice the court or jury. Next, the photograph must be free from distortion and not misrepresent the scene or the object it purports to reproduce. Now, photographing specific crime scenes. Each crime scene has unique characteristics and the type of photographs needed will be determined at the scene by the investigators familiar with the crime. In this, the first is a specific crimes. Each crime scene has its own particular features and the type of photography required at each scene will be determined by those features. In this, the first is homicide. Murder has been called the most heinous of crimes, the taking of another human life. It is a curse to humanity and demands swift and satisfactory resolution. It will be important to photograph any signs of activity prior to the murder, any evidence of a struggle or of forced entry if an indoor scene, and the views of the position any witness had of the crime. You will usually have to attend and photograph the ensuing autopsy where as well as taking photographs for your own information. You may be asked by the attending pathologist to take photographs of anatomical significance for his information. Now the B is suicide other dead bodies call. When attending a suicide or any other disease for the matter and there is some doubts as the circumstances of the death treat is at a homicide. If the suicide turns out to be a murder, you have covered it fully. Now the next is burglaries. Photographs like residential or commercial burglaries. In this you should first photograph the exterior of the building, then the point of entry, then you should photograph the entrance into scene, then the interior views, then you should photograph the areas from which valuable articles were removed. Then you should photograph the damage to locks, safes, doors and the tool marks. Then article or tools left at the scene by the suspect. Then you should photograph the trace evidences, then the other physical evidences. Now the assault or the injuries. Assault and other injuries crime firstly require a general overall photograph of the victim prior to detailed photographs of injury. An assault victim can be photographed like a mini crime scene with general photographs, mid-range and close-ups. When photographing bruises, bite marks and other injuries close-up, use a scale to show the size of the injuries. Photograph at 90 degree to the injury to avoid distortion and use a small aperture especially on curved surfaces such as an arm or finger to increase depth of the field and so ensure the entire injury image is sharp. Now the next is trace evidence, in this the shoe and tire impression. The same principle applies as in general crime scene photography with the photograph showing where in the scene the impressions are located. This can be indicated with a marker alongside the impression which is left in position when the mid-range and close-up photographs are taken. Of course, a scale is always included in the photograph as well as identifier with the date, location and initial therons. It is important to keep the digital plane of the camera parallel to the surface bearing the impression. It is equally important to use an oblique light source to reveal the detail of the impression. When using flash in this way on an impression which is outdoors and in sunlight, cast a shadow across the impression to enable the flash to create a greater contrast and so reveal the detail in the impression. 
while a shoe impression can be photographed in one frame. A tire impression however needs numerous frames which must overlap and here it is important to have a measuring tape along with the impression to show the scale and to enable the photographs to be joined if necessary. This particular image is depicting the same. Now the next is blood splash patterns. Photographs of blood splash patterns whether they be on a floor on a vertical surface such as a wall or even overhead on a ceiling must be photographed with the film plane parallel to the surface bearing the stain. A scale must be included on the same plane as the surface. Of course, like any serious crime scene, general location photographs must be taken to show the positions of the blood staining at the scene. In this, the first point is use color film digital media. Second, orientation photographs to show locations of blood stain evidence at the scene. Third, close up photographs to show detail. In this, use a scale on the same plane as the blood stain and keep the film parallel to the plane of the blood stain. Use a low oblique light angle. Now, macro or micro photography. Apart from 1 to 1 and 5 to 1 fingerprint photographs, other detailed photographs are often required of tool marks, serial numbers, pieces of jewelry and the like. The focusing of a lens so called to small objects, especially when an extension tube is used, requires the use of the smallest possible aperture in the camera lens to ensure maximum depth of the field and clarity of detail of the items being photographed. Next is to the specific type of fingerprint subjects. In this, the first is normal and dust prints. Second is usually can be photographed with no problem. Now the next is impressions in soft substances like wax, putty, clay, adhesive tape, grease, etc. Use cross lighting at an oblique angle or preview with flashlight lighting. Now on the porous surfaces, you may need to use close to a 90 degree lighting angle and to preview with flashlight lighting. Now on glass and mirrors. For glass, place white card or cloth behind glass. Use low oblique angle of light. Now, alternate light sources. Many lighting sources are available in forensic photography apart from ambient daylight and electronic flash. They include infrared, ultraviolet, lasers, etc. Each has its own applications and limitations. Their use are mainly restricted to the crime laboratory with the exception of some brands which are portable and can be taken to and used at crime scenes to reveal and enhance latent trace evidences such as fibers and body fluids. Photographing of such trace evidences requires the use of barrier filters and descriptions of techniques and applications which are too detailed and comprehensive to report there. Now witness photograph. Witness photographers are overall photos of the crime scene. They depict the scene as observed by a witness. These photographs are designed to tell a story to relate what the location looked like to someone who was not present. Now the photogrammetry. It is the science of producing 3D image from 2D image. Photography produces 2D image of 3D image. As a result of that conversion depth of the object is lost. The depth of lost cannot be recovered from a single photograph. However, we can compensate this depth value by taking two differently angled photographs of the same object. By this process, a line of sight is developed. These lines, when mathematically interpolated by 
triangulation process, a three-dimensional image are produced. The XYZ data is named as .dxf data drawing interchange file format. The .dxf data when exported in user-friendly CAD program, it produces a 3D image using eyewitness and crime zone software. Now approach to the actual crime scene. Now the admissibility of photographs. Negatives are also important if enlargements of certain areas are to be made for comparison. Negatives demonstrate that the picture has not been altered. Now videography. Videography has a great potential for the purpose and a video comrader should be an instrument of choice to record the scene of crime. Images should be captured in the highest quality setting of the camera with external additional light source where the illumination is not enough. Large areas of the scene can be converted showing the interrelationship among the locations and relative distance with elevation. Results can be played back immediately. Original video cassettes or the memory cards are to be submitted for evidence. Since no editing is accepted, the video shutting should be made in such a way that only relevant portions are recorded crisply. Now, laboratory photography. In scientific crime detection, the camera plays a paramount importance among laboratory instruments. Photographs provided a record of the initial appearance of evidence, a record of observation made after subjecting the evidence to scientific examination. Now sketching. Sketches are handy in depicting the scene of crime. Along with photograph, the sketches provide ideal presentation of the scene. Now the summary. The crime scene is the area where a crime namely theft, robbery, loot or murder has taken place and from which majority of the physical evidence associated with the crime is obtained. After the initial walkthrough or survey of the crime scene, the investigator should mentally formulate a hypothesis of the crime, focusing on the likely sequences of events and the locations and positions of everyone present during the crime. Crime scene photographers should use a high quality digital camera, preferably a SLR camera. Out of all the sciences used in forensic investigation, photography plays a vital role and is a visual means of communication.